Has anyone lost a job or a home? Has anyone lost a best friend? Did anyone lose a dream they had in life that they really thought they would have when they were this age? So you see, we all, we all are so connected with loss. And even though my loss came as the loss of a child, we all experience loss. And the worst loss I found out that a person can experience is loss of self. And that was one of the three choices I had when I lost my daughter. When, when my daughter was murdered and I buried her, I realized that the way I handled this loss was going to carve out my soul's destination in some powerful ways. And I also realized one day that if I let fear and anger keep me from being myself on earth, that I, I definitely wouldn't exist. I just wouldn't be here. I'd be taking up space. And when Joanne and I used to walk and go on some of our adventures, I would tell her, I said, you know, Joanne, this is the last time I'm going to be down here. And she'd say, huh. And I said, yeah, I just believe it is. I said, it's just I've got a feeling that I'm going to get it all this time. And so she would say, you're not going to leave anytime soon, are you? And I'd say, no, I'm not going to leave until you're finished with me. So every time we'd talk and say goodbye, she'd say, you're not going anywhere. And I'd say, no, not until you're finished with me. Well, little did I know she was going to leave this earth before me. But I'm still fulfilling my promise to Joanne. I'm not going anywhere until she's finished with me down here. And she's got a lot of explaining to do while she's up there having fun. And I'm here finishing this job. But I'm not going to quit until she's finished with me. And I've got the message that she wants me to tell you. I have, um, I have considered what is, my, what is my lesson that I wanted to have this time in life. And I realized that it's loss and letting go and pure faith. And in order to have pure faith, in order to have two things, pure faith and experience life to the fullest, I had to lose all my beliefs. I had to lose all my identity of who I thought I was. Anything that served me in the past that I could count on had to be gone because that's the only way I could truly experience anything in the moment as myself and real. So in order for me to finish what I started and to accomplish the task that I think I wanted to have down here, and then I was thinking, what was I thinking when I said I wanted this? But I have known what it's like to carry a soul in my body getting ready to enter this earth. I have been there at the very second that that life entered this earth. I got to be with that human being and I got to experience things and learn things from that human being for 30 years. Then I got to witness the death of that human being and put her earthly body in the ground. So I truly know life from beginning to end here on earth. I also have seen the unconditional face of God in my two children's eyes. And I always said that my two children were a hug from God because I could just feel his, his presence when I hugged my children. I also have had an intimate relationship with evil for the last 12 years. Um, they caught the man that murdered my daughter, and I've in some ways had to be on his path for a while and look into his eyes. So I've had two extremes, but I can say that I haven't missed anything. Would I do this again if I knew that the pain was there? Yes.
because through the experiences that I've had by being myself and by being present in my own life and living with sheer guts some days, I've experienced the most beautiful things you can experience on earth. And I know for a fact angels exist. And I didn't, I didn't really, Joanne loved angels and she talked about angels all the time. And she was a very, very spiritual person. But we also had a lot of fun and lived life to the fullest. And so this was one of our many adventures that we, I, I got to experience everything I ever wanted to do in life with my daughter. Um, we went out west, climbed the Grand Tetons. We got on the merry-go-round at Disney World when she was uh, um, 28. Um, it was absolutely beautiful. And so if there's anything I can encourage you to do is to live life to the fullest. Um, and, and do the things that you dream of. And hug the people that you love. But... Angels were a real important part of, of Joanne's life, and I just kind of dismissed them. And after she died, she left a, um, a five-year-old and uh, a three-year-old uh, nephews. And the three-year-old, a couple of years later, would say, where's Aunt JoJo? And so we would try to explain the best we could where Aunt JoJo was. But then that brought about questions. Well, where is heaven? Well, is she doing anything up there she likes? Is she all alone? I mean, it just brought all these questions. And then one evening when Beth was telling Kyle about this, he started crying and she said, Kyle, what is the matter? And he said, I'm going to miss myself when I die. <laughs> so, you know, how do you explain to a small child something like this? But then again, when I went through this, I was just like that small child. All my uh, beliefs, everything that I thought was real left me instantly the day, the moment I heard that my child was dead. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the crime. I, I choose not to spend too much time on the crime because, um, number one, during the trial, he said that it, he had left... Um, information that, of what he was going to do in the crime and, and what he wanted out of life, and it was to rape, rob, and pillage and become famous. And he had only been out of prison three weeks when, uh, when Joanne entered her cabin, and, and he was there. So I'm going to not give him that honor. And you won't see his name in my book. But this was Joanne when she bought her cabin. She was a nurse practitioner. She graduated from Vanderbilt. She was a nurse practitioner. And she got a job in uh, Blue Ridge, Georgia. And in two short years, she had over 3,000 patients. She was excellent. She was very good. They were underserved. And she wanted me to take a picture of her every day, uh, I mean, in every room in that cabin when she bought it. So this was Joanne two years before she died. And that was in her new cabin. I was sitting on the steps talking to a neighbor about having my fingers manicured when she was dying. And that still haunts me today some. Um, but when I saw the man, he... Um, he was 6'9". He had just been out of prison for three, about three weeks, and he came to live with his mother. And Joanne was just the epitome of love. I've heard that so much here, that it, just the epitome of love gets the hardest road sometimes. But um, she didn't have any idea he existed, but his mother carried him around the, co the community to tell, tell him where everybody lived so he knew she existed. So one Sunday evening, he was waiting for her when she entered her cabin. 